And we're back in the Nova Podcast, where we're doing fitness, business, and leadership every week. It's kind of our new motto. We, yeah. We've been working on it, yeah. trying to improve the pod. So today we are here with John Baker, the Jiu-Jitsu Student of the Month. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I know you train regularly, so obviously you're doing. You're not just laying around getting beat up. You're, you must be putting in some good work. Yeah, no, I get beat up a lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For what it's worth, I, I identify yeah. with that a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying to start a rumor, maybe you guys can help, that the student of the month shouldn't be tapped out for like the whole month. Yeah. That's, that's, that sounds fair. I think that would be like, you know, good gym etiquette. Well, it, would be, it would be polite, I guess, but it, would it make you a better... Oh, no, no. That would be purely to bad my ego and, and patronize me. That's good. And then like the whole next month, they like realign your ego and just yeah. tap you out every minute. <laughs> you know, like... good. Every person that suddenly wants to roll with you as a black belt, and you're like, wait, this isn't, this isn't <laughs> seem fair. I, <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Um, so, John, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, who you are, what you do, and, uh, you know, a little bit about your jiu-jitsu background. Okay. Um, well, I grew up on Long Island. Um, I was a, a swimmer in high school and college and enjoyed that. And then I ended up up here, I went to Fredonia as an undergraduate. And then went to grad school um, in South Carolina, but then ended up up here. I was working for Paychex. It was my first job out of grad school. What was uh, grad school at? Um, computer science. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think I said that the fast-paced, action-packed world of computer science. Ah, yes. yes. Uh, like, you probably do it for the violence, right? Yeah. Jiu-Jitsu slows it down for you? Yeah, it's like synonymous, okay. you know. Yeah. Software yeah. development, violence. Yep. I, I, natural. <laughs> you're just an adrenaline junkie, I assume. Now, <laughs> now that I'm getting to know you, I see it all come yeah, together. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Um, oh but then I first started taking um, jujitsu. It was it, well, it was twenty years ago or so because it was just before my son was born, and it was when Kyle Saunders, who I don't know if you guys would have met him, but he was the first like legitimate Brazilian jujitsu person coaching in Rochester. I, I have met Kyle a couple times. I know him. I don't know him personally, or I've never rolled with him or anything like that. But I do know who you're talking about. Yeah. Gotcha. And at the time, he was a purple belt and had the first school down in uh, Winton Place, right near where Beers of the World used to be. Okay. Okay. I've been to Beers of the World too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it was uh, it was it was small. Like sometimes I would go and it would just be like me and Kyle out of class. Like he was growing it, and Kyle would still want to spar for like an hour and a half, which never ended well for me. But um, you know, I learned a lot yeah. from him, and then started having kids. So I had my my son, took time off for that, came back, had my second son, same thing, and, and then finally my daughter. So over the next five years, I was like in and out a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally like took extended breaks and would pop back in here and there, but nothing nothing consistent. And then finally, like, what, four years ago or so, my son and stepson were asking about jiu-jitsu, and I was talking to them a lot about it. And they're like, oh, we'd like to go and try a class. So I started, you know, looking into it, and uh, Jason, the place that who I'd met back at Kyle's years ago, mm-hmm. you know, now he had his own school and was a black belt and so on, so I, I came in and... and Saw Jason and like started bringing the kids in and got back into it. So how long were you out of jiu-jitsu? Was it, were you 10, um, 10, 12 year gap or just on and off? Yeah, on and off, but there were definitely like, you know, multi-year long Okay, gaps. all right. Yeah. Interesting. I, I had no idea you rolled so long. Uh, I mean, yeah. I rolled with you a couple times and obviously I knew you know what you were doing compared to me, but I, 20 years is... That's but I haven't been doing it for 20 years. Like my, my, this, this streak now where I've been going for... Four years consistently. This is the longest consistent streak I've, yeah. I've ever put together. So I believe I've seen you at least with one or two of your sons yeah. in here rolling before. Yeah. And I, I remember when you answered our questionnaire, I, I turned, oh yeah, I've seen him with his kids before. So how is that? How is? Um, it's it's really really cool. Like as as a father, stepfather, I love it. Like to be able to come to class with my son and stepson, like is cool. And we um, we roll at home. Like we'll do a round timer and clear out the furniture in the basement and and do that. So it's I don't know. It's pretty cool to like, just to like raise the kids into adulthood, and and they're, you know, don't mind hanging out with me, and I really like genuinely enjoy hanging out with them, and to have the common interest and so on. Now, have, have they started getting good, like in the sense that you're worried, or you just still kick their ass? No, 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 they're they're, they're good. Like it, it <laughs> which is I, I tell people like when I've seen other people bring their kids, and I'm like, careful what you start. Like it starts yeah, out yeah. cute, you know. Like they're when I started, they were both <laughs> shorter than me, and now they're both taller than me. They're both yeah. stronger than me, and. But it's cool to see like their different personalities come through, like in their jujitsu game. Like my yeah. stepson is more conservative, and he rolls more not to lose. He's definitely like a position over submission kind of like he'll want to have control or pin you before he'll even think about a submission, and doesn't want to tap out. 
my son could care less if he taps out. Wherever he is, he'll like go for some submission, even if it's low percentage and a bad idea. But he'll he'll tap out and doesn't That's care. My strategy too. <laughs> <laughs> I could have guessed that. <laughs> hey, you know, you play the game to win. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, how hard is it to kind of bebop in and out of the sport of jujitsu? Like for fitness, it's really hard. You take a couple years off, you get back in, you're like humbled real quick. <laughs> oh yeah, no, there was a, a lot of that. And for all that time, I mean, I was a white belt. I never put together a streak long enough to really earn the first belt, mm. the blue belt. But it was easier coming back in as a white belt because everyone that starts is a white sure. belt. So I could come back in and, and feel like, I don't know, that no one knows that I even did anything before because there's like, you know, a lot of new students and so on. Mm. And I felt fine with it. I think it would be more pressure, like, I don't know, any other belt to come in. And then if you took time off, there'll be some expectations. So, yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, so have you been in and out of Nova Fitness in the last like 10 years, 11 years? Um, in and out of, um, what was Kyle's gym. So I trained with Kyle down at Winton Place and then he had a gym in East Rochester for a little bit and went in there for a short period of time and then took time off and then eventually found the the Nova group over at the other place. So you, and you've been pretty consistent the last number of years here. Yeah, yeah. since, I forget, 16 or 17, 2016, 2017. Yeah, so we we probably started getting, I said I probably started here in the position I'm at now, more or less around that same time. Gotcha. Just just before you. Cool, cool. Um, So, you know, we ask this question to everyone, but, you know, where do you find jiu-jitsu playing a role in your regular life? You know, so what you, I know a lot of times we take things from the gym and you know accidentally or intentionally apply uh-huh. it in regular life. Have you found any situations like that where? Um, yeah, nothing. I mean, nothing like where I had to get in a, a fight or anything like that. Well, I don't even mean just the physical but, stuff, but maybe the principles that we teach, the philosophy of jujitsu. Yeah, I'd, I guess it. I feel a certain sense of calmness. I don't know, like a like I know that. Uh, um, I don't know. Just I feel like um, you were asking about jujitsu and how yeah, I apply it to my regular life, and I. I don't know. I feel that, I guess it gives me a sense of calmness, like just mm-hmm. being out and about, like feeling grounded and centered. And that, that, That's one of the common themes I've been hearing more and more, not only like uh, from people here, but I was listening. Are you familiar with Jocko Willink? Yeah. Uh, I was just listening. He was doing an interview with, uh, oh, I forget his first name, one of the Gracies. Um, oh, my God. Nixon. Gracie. Do you know the names? Hickson. Hickson. Gracie. Okay. Yes. That's what the interview was, but I'm sorry. And that's exactly what they were just talking about. I was listening to that before I came here, ironically. Uh-huh. And they were talking about the, how they were able to stay calm in life um, because of the calmness they learn, you know, the mental control you learn on the map. But that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, well, so any memorable moments that stand out to you since you've been here? Um, getting my, my, my blue belt was a, a big moment because I, I stopped and started so many times. And I, a couple of the previous times... I think I kind of got close, but just never quite got there. So when I came back after training a few years to finally earn that was a was a great feeling. Like I, I said this in my write up, but I felt like I had unfinished business, like kind of hanging over my head for a while. Mm-hmm. In the back of my mind, I'm like, I gotta go back and like just at least get my my blue belt. How, how was that? Uh, you know, I know we have some testing coming up in a couple of weeks here for some of the guys. Uh, how was it for you when you did it? You know, um, I was lucky in that it wasn't really a test or at least not a formal test okay i um i rolled with a number of instructors like like for the i don't know a couple weeks leading up to it and i kind of had a sense that maybe they were looking for certain things like i kind of i had a sense that maybe it was like kind of an informal sort of test but i didn't have any kind of like show up in any kind of shark tank or any of those like horror stories that you hear okay i know that some of the guys you know when they especially when they move from that blue to purple or up even further (coughs) it's quite a uh obstacle of a test i don't know what is causing me to cough so much i have this like scratch in my throat that is, <laughs> i'm so sorry um and i've seen like i remember when torn got his black belt like torn's pretty strong tough guy and he yeah. looked white and he told me that it was the hardest thing he's ever done in his life and i was like holy yeah that yeah. must have been tough knowing him yeah and uh you know i've just seen some of those guys so i i'm looking forward in a few weeks when those guys uh test here that yeah me too i have like no you think idea, nina's gonna be the either. camera on crew yeah, yeah. they're gonna you think it worked pretty hard like <laughs> they look like me coming from a beat down that russ gave me or something uh-huh. <laughs> yeah yeah Purple face, bloodshot eyes. <laughs> uh, but yeah. cool. Um, 
So what's next for you then? If you you know, it's been a number of years to get to the blue belt. Are you in pursuit of kind of just continuing to develop, or are you... just continuing to develop? I just want to I don't know continue to learn. Um, um, you know, eventually I'd like to get my my purple belt, but uh, so it is on your mind a little. Sure. I mean, like, I don't want to. I'm not looking to, to quit. I, I kind of found this now. I've got the time to do it, and I'm kind of mm-hmm. I don't know in it for the long haul at this point. Cool. Is there anyone here that you think you've learned like the most from, or you know, some of the people maybe here that have helped you along the way? Because you know, twenty years they, I know it's not consistent, but that's still a window of time to oh, yeah. grow up as a man. I mean, <laughs> I, would, I don't know how old you are. I'm going to say if you don't want, it, but I mean, twenty years is twenty years. Yeah. And then to do it in and out of jiu-jitsu, there's probably a lot you learn along the way. And I know, like at least for me in CrossFit, you know, people you train with, work out with regularly, kind of learn from, like you. Yeah, their character will rub off on you for better or worse. Oh yeah, like well, starting with 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 Kyle. I mean, when I started training, he was obviously a lot better than me. Um, which I mean, he still is. But even like then, he would when we would roll, he would always let me start with a top position, and so it was kind of cool because it it gave me a chance to like get a top position which I wouldn't have otherwise gotten. Yeah. And so for me, the game was how long can I just hold it? You know, like three seconds, four seconds, like whatever. Like each time, just I had some challenge to work toward. Even though, like you know, eventually he would you know sweep me and submit me and so on, but it gave me something to like to start with and, and work toward. But then, I mean, Jason, of course, he's um, obviously like better, bigger, stronger than me. But he always like works and like will let me work things and give me feedback. And um, um, Kevin Wu is is great at like telling me all the you know dumb things I do and, and yeah, does he tell you the dumb things you do right after he like teaches you the hard way not to do them well usually like like, both like don't, don't put your arm out why not snap yeah. <laughs> like, like both Kevin and, and Steve they'll let me do something um, stupid a few times and then eventually they'll be like roll their eyes and look at me like that's exactly yeah. okay like Steve one time I was rolling with him and he was starting sitting down and he does this thing a loop choke which is just kind of simple you grab your gi and wrap it around your head and and so he's sitting down and I come forward and he has my lapel and I, I know he knows this choke I know he likes this choke but I'm bullheaded and I'm like well I'm going to go forward anyway and see how this turns out and it turns out with me getting caught in a loop choke but then I backed up and proceeded to do the same exact thing two more times and then finally he's like looking at me like I'm the biggest idiot in the world which you know it could... looks like you steal a little bit of my game too <laughs> not, just, not just your son or you right. take some of my game yeah, alright yeah. I understand yeah. <laughs> I, th- I thought it would work too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like Charlie Brown trying to k- kick the football from Lucy. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. This right. time will be different. Yes, the uh, uh, definition of insanity. Just keep yeah. trying. Just yeah. keep trying. Just keep going. Um, so, so Sean gave us a good breakdown when he was on our pod to kind of mm-hmm. talk about his own game. You know, uh-huh. uh, do you have a? Would you? How would you describe your game? Uh, and I'm asking for my own research purposes. You know, you never know when you're going to see me out there, John. Okay. Okay. I'm going shrimp- <laughs> to be shrimping and moving. Okay. I'm going to be shrimping and moving. Okay. And maybe some other things. Those of you uh-huh. listening on Spotify cannot see the. <laughs> <laughs> squirrely dance that was just happening. Dance. I mean, it's not, it's not squirrely. It's shrimping. It's very different. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of developing my game. Like, and that's kind of the, the blue belt. Like some people call it the, the buffet belt where you try everything and you mm-hmm. kind of figure out what works for you. And I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to take a lesson from my, my son and who's not afraid to tap out and just try different things and experiment and just say, okay, that didn't work. And, you know, I'll try mm-hmm. something different. Good news is, John, the next time we're rolling... I don't even have enough submissions to use on you. You could try anything. <laughs> and at best case, in worst case scenario, it's just not going to work. But I have no offense, so keep that in mind. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and I'm, you know, according to Nina, squirrely. Squirrely. <laughs> uh, I don't know, just have fun. Oh, Jiu-Jitsu is like one of those things if you, I mean, it's like you get so much out of it if you take if you look to get stuff out of it right? right but if you take it too serious it could be one discouraging ass game so i, I kind of like have to laugh at myself or kind of make fun of how hard it is yeah to like cope with how hard it is sometimes right. you know what i mean well that's i don't know i think that's for me personally i don't know if everyone takes that same i think that's common like i remember i probably still do this to some extent but when i first started out like someone would get me in an arm bar and at that point i would like grab my arm and like and try and fight to the bitter end which is, is dumb because I've already made the mistakes. Like, neither of us are learning anything if I'm just trying to prevent him from straightening out my arm. Yeah. Like, that's probably a good time to just tap out and reset and let us both go on to learning something. Yeah. Yeah. 
you sometimes when some of those arm bars happen, I get a little a little scared, like where I want to fight, but I'm like maybe I should just tap now before this gets out of control because like. And sometimes I have this crazy idea. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll myself into it. I feel it coming. <laughs> Every once in a while, it's almost work. You get yeah. the elbow pulled out if you roll into uh-huh. it. But sometimes it hasn't worked. And yeah. <laughs> thankfully, when I'm in those situations, you know, normally the people trying to put me on the arm bar, uh, they know not to. Yeah. They know how not to hurt me, which is we talked yeah. about before in the other pod episodes. Right. You know, the more advanced people are also really good at not letting. Uh, quote unquote incidences happen right everyone's you know, I think really good about that I think we're lucky to have such a good crew like people don't hurt other people I mean everyone you know is is friendly there are people like like you brought up Russ he's a great example he's you know if you don't know Russ he's strong <laughs> yeah. um, but when you don't you, even have to feel him on the mat to know that just look at right. him if but, there's ever been a definition of someone who looks strong <laughs> yeah but when I roll with him I mean he, he could beat me just on strength but he, he doesn't it doesn't feel like you know he's beating me just on strength he uses his technique and he's very good at like making me feel like i i lost for the right reason <laughs> yeah yeah you know for i think uh the times i was rolling with jason like I've, i remember coaching jason lots of times in crossfit seeing him weight lift and different things so uh, i know in theory i am way stronger my muscles are way stronger but on the mat i was like like a puppet getting yeah. moved around at will and yeah. he was like not trying it was yeah. like he was had like strings tied to me and he was just doo, 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 yeah. hey, man, you're, yeah, and you're submitted <laughs> <laughs> and i was like this is the most helpless feeling i've ever felt you know and <laughs> it's it's a it's a different type of strength i guess you know yeah. um you know was there any time where you were kind of like um you know maybe discouraged along the way i mean getting to a blue belt is a heck of a milestone i think anywhere up from there is just outstanding um so you must have at one point been like, hey, I want to get to a blue belt. Yeah. And probably had some setbacks because success is not always linear. Uh-huh. How did you kind of, what happened and how did you kind of get over that um, or work through it maybe? Question. So well, just you- after getting my blue belt, like six months later, I tore the meniscus in my knee. Um, and I could come and kind of train for a bit, but I couldn't use that leg. And so for a while I was like, should I come? Should I just take extended time off? And it took a while to get it diagnosed properly before I finally got an MRI and then I got surgery and then I couldn't you know, put any weight on it for six months, not six months, six weeks. Um, so during that whole time I was, I was frustrated and, and there was where I had a little like, I don't know, like meeting with myself. I was like, you know, do I really want to keep doing this? Do I want to risk getting hurt? I didn't hurt it at jujitsu, but I was like, you know, I'm getting older. Yeah. Do it I wanna... Shit just happens. You know? yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I talked to the, the surgeon about it. He's like, you know, no, I, I, you know, don't see any reason why you can't go back. And so I just kind of thought about it. I was like, no, you know, I, I enjoy this. I'll, I think I can just be careful with it. Don't be stupid. And how's the knee now? Good. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Left knee, right knee. Right knee. John's right. I just take a mental note. Uh, uh-huh. Developing my game, John. You know? uh-huh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just gotcha. kidding. I'm so kidding. Well, yeah. don't do it this month. I'm student of the month. You can't tap me out. Oh, that's right. <laughs> don't worry, John. Like I said, I don't have any submission. I know like one wrist lock, and that's uh-huh. probably the most common one that Man. everyone knows how to defend. Went so. Right to wrist lock? That's like the... I don't I, know. I mean... One. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know like one. I know that uh, what the gi choke. Uh, what is it, what's it called with the cross? Uh, yeah, the palm up, palm up, or yep. palm up, palm down. Or... I mean, I've been taught that. I don't know if I know how to do it well. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, don't worry. You don't have to worry about my submission game. <laughs> I'm still in survival mode every day. My goodness. Uh, so I noticed you're a heck of a fisherman, apparently. Yeah, I love love fishing. Always loved fishing. Where where do you go most commonly? Um, any of the local ponds. I, a couple of weeks ago, I was out in Honeyway. Um, I rented a boat there and went out for the afternoon mm-hmm. with my my son and stepson. Yeah, that's why I picked that picture off your yeah. Facebook. I was like, oh, look at this, a man with a fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, awesome. we, 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 I couldn't find any jujitsu pictures of you. Oh, really? Yeah. We, I have some up there, just not in a while. Mm. On it, Nina. All right, we'll get there. Yeah. How many people outside of the gym know that this is one of the things that you're into doing in your free time? Is it a conversation starter, or is it like you're keeping it on the DL, like you want to be ninja status? Um, no, people know. Um, my wife, Rose Crew, um, and she she swam in high school too, so we both had that in common. But um, like we've talked about, like me doing crew and her doing jujitsu. Mm-hmm. If she could do it with her nails, she loves her nails, then I could get her to try it probably. 
she can do crew with the nail, so she's going to stick with that. That nail thing is a whole topic I have with some of the girls in CrossFit. Uh-huh. They're lifting all these barbells, doing all these burpees and push-ups and run and everything. But there's a thing in barbell lifting where your hook grip, you put your, you grab the bar, two th- fingers over your thumb. Uh-huh. Not those girls, because if we mess up their nails, I'm like, <laughs> you guys are literally doing burpees in the dirt sometimes on the driveway. Yeah. <laughs> but the, th- the hook grip, no, yeah, it's yeah. a game changer. No, I was no, even no. impressed the gymnasts in the Olympics, they've got like nails. I'm like, how? How huh. are you like coming off of a vault with a handful of nails? I, I just don't know. Yeah. Did you say you had a daughter? Me. Yeah. Do you ever wear the blue belt around the house if she has a friend coming over, a boyfriend or something? No, no. I don't know how old she is, but <laughs> I, like, it's like a dad with his gun or something. You know, you said you just yeah. wear your blue belt. What no. about the... I'm watching you. The full game. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Then it's like, you know, hey, I got no problem going back to prison. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Give him that cock. Uh, that'd be a thing to do. If, if I think if I was like a, you know, brown belt, black belt, so any, any belt really, I would, I'd just use that once in a while. Just to, if I'm feeling tough. It's like, you know, if you're feeling real extra tough for no reason at all, you put your high school jersey on. It's like, <laughs> tell you about back in my day yeah. stuff. You know? yeah. Can't say I, uh, my poor kids are going to grow up so <laughs> slightly traumatized. So. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we're trying. We're working to kind of grow the jiu-jitsu program back to kind of where it was and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, we're working at the process of getting you guys bigger space too. I know. Uh-huh. I know it's it's an unenjoyable situation right now. It's not ideal. Um, you know, what would you say to somebody who's interested in jiu-jitsu? Not sure what to think of it. Not sure. You know, maybe nervous to try it. And I think right. a lot of people. I think it piques people's interest. Yeah. People are just nervous to cross that line and come in for the first time. I yeah. know I was until I did it. Mm-hmm. Um, heck, see, sometimes I still am. <laughs> when I come in, I'm just like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, what would you say to them? Or what would you think um, maybe helped you when you got started? I think the biggest hurdle is just, like you said, just come in and even if you just want to watch a first class, like you can always come in and, and talk to the instructor and say, hey, I'm interested in it. Can I watch a class? And they always, you know, would say yes. And then after that, like the next hurdle is come in and just try, try a class. Like, And again, no one's going to hurt you the people that know what they're doing they they know that you're new everyone's been new so it's you know come in and, and try it and and you know i promise you people will be friendly and welcoming and that i think i don't know i think the biggest hurdle is taking that first step like when mm-hmm. i want to exercise in the morning i say the hardest part is just putting my feet on the floor mm-hmm. and getting out of bed like if i do that then i've got some momentum and i'll i'll do it you know i know in the class structure and i'm sure it's like this with jiu-jitsu, but in crossfit like a lot of times if i just get there like I'll be like, oh, I don't even want to really do this workout. But once the warm up starts, yeah. kind of getting the vibe from everyone else, you start moving around. It's like, boom, you're in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. And just at the end of it, you're like, holy crap! I'm glad that's. Yeah. I'm glad I came when. Yeah. Easily could have made the other decision yeah. to not. And there's a lot of different, I don't know, attractions for different people depending on your goals. I mean, like um, some people are really into competition and are looking forward to that starting back up mm-hmm. um, after COVID and all that. Some people, I don't know, just do it for the exercise or. Like I kind of said in my write-up, I, I feel like I'm, it's like playing chess with your body. There's a lot of, if I do this and he does that, then what would I do next? Like, you know, mm-hmm. counters and counters to counters and so on. And I like the mental aspect of it, too. Yeah. yeah. The exercise of it is unique, too. I, 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 I don't know how to describe it. I wouldn't know how to compare it. It's, it's, it only, I guess you can compare it to wrestling. But it's its own type of conditioning, its own type of stamina. The way you use your body is different. Yeah. And so, like... Yeah, I don't know. How to, that's a just off topic thing, but it's it's a great workout. Um, cool, great, awesome. I mean, what do you got for John? <laughs> <laughs> We're still trying to pressure Neen. Neen's got to get on the mat. We need to get her in a gi. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is. There's. I, I mean, feel there's timid. Yeah. Obviously, the regular classes, and then Susanna started the women's classes. I know. A lot and of Susanna and Katie are great. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. TBD. Okay. <laughs> Do you have nails? Gonna That's my stare into your soul. Stare at me until I say I'm gonna come, but um, I cannot <laughs> commit. I can't. I can't right now. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's not like something you commit. You know, you'd be surprised. And I didn't realize this when I first started jujitsu, but how much you can get out of one or two times a week. Yeah. Because like I don't roll that often. I barely get it in once a week, um, or I'll get a couple days in a row even. But then I'm like, I won't for two weeks. And it's like every time I return though. It's like you don't forget what you learned in the last yeah. class. It is weird how you put the pieces together, and they stick pretty well. It's not like if I take two weeks off, I 
it's like I was never on the mat again. It right. comes back quickly. I, I've been surprised by that. For because I kept thinking, you know, like CrossFit, we tell people, you know, three times a week is really ideal. That's where you'll see noticeable difference. And that's some pretty yeah. regular. Or jujitsu, I feel like you don't need to train that much as long as you're like in tune when you're training. Right. The I think the muscle memory stays. I think the stamina goes quickly, at least for me at my, my age. <laughs> when I first started, Kevin Wu told me, you know, one or two times a week is going to be plenty. And I'm like, one or two times a week, I can do more than that. Like, and then uh, I could, I guess, do more, but I don't need yeah. to, like, uh-huh. it, it, for how serious I am about it right now. Uh-huh. And I don't know. I just found that was something interesting. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, this big commitment. All right, guys, now I do just do four or five days a week, and it's a big piece of my life. It can be a thing that you do recreationally, but... The pieces come together, class yeah. by class. I, I've, I've actually been surprised by that, yeah. too, which is something I would probably tell a new person. Nina? I know, I know. Oh, okay, don't don't get heated. We don't want the pressure on too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, John, thank you for joining us, um, and thank you for being part of the you know, yeah. jiu-jitsu program. Obviously, oh, yeah. you know your coaches stuff that wouldn't have nominated you if you weren't doing stuff right, and you know, well, the discussion we have when we're talking about nominating students of the month is like, you know, if you had 10 more people like this person would the facility be amazing yes or no and like that's usually the kind of person we're trying to nominate so big kudos to you and uh you know try to tell you help you understand that you know i don't know exactly what you do day to day in your training but obviously your coaches you know or professors and Uh believe in jiu-jitsu have been impressed and uh like what you're doing so um continue to be a great role model for the others and uh, you know chase down that purple belt okay we'll do. You, do you have anything you want to add today anything you want to say uh no just um anyone else thinking about trying it just stop in and, and try it's a great school all right well, g- all right well i'll see you on the mat soon yeah and this has been in the nova with john baker bjj student of the month we'll get you a parking spot no i don't know oh. but <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea